Hey there, fourth graders. This is Mrs. Smith here. Today we are doing unit three, lesson number nine, which is on page 123, one, two, three, of your math book. So go ahead and get that open and a pencil and probably your math board. It's always nice to have it. Um, so in this video, we in lesson, we're talking about like what to do with remainders when you're dealing with a word problem and how in different word problems, uh, a remainder can lead to a different type of answer, even if the equation is the same. So, so far we've done like a million of <laughs> these like numerical division problems where you have nine things, you're dividing it into four groups, you have two in each group and there's one left over. Now with remainders, that one left over can mean different things. Sometimes it's not part of the question. Sometimes uh, it needs to be rounded up right? Um, so bring that two to a three because of that one left over. Sometimes it's a fraction part of the answer. And then sometimes it's a decimal, which means that little like period in math, usually you'll see that in like money, right? And then sometimes it's the only part needed in the question. So uh, as you're approaching different scenarios in life, and you're trying to be fair and share things, uh, remember that that remainder is going to be important. And even like later on in some division problems, you're not going to use remainders. You'll be putting a decimal in there and then continuing to divide to, divide to find the, you know, what, however many tenths or hundredths or whatever to evenly divide it. But sometimes in life, um, you do just need to use the remainder and use that to solve the problem. Like often as a teacher, I find that um, the remainder causes the answer to round up. Like usually if you're buying supplies and say you have, uh, you know, 26 kids and you eat in each package, there are like four pencils or something like that. Uh, if I did, okay, four times six is, uh, 24 and I have a re remainder of two. That means I have two kids who aren't getting a pencil if I only get the six packages. So I have to buy that seventh package of pencils so that all of my kids will have pencils and then I end up having two left over rather than having two kids who don't get anything. Does that make sense? Um, so this is uh, important and we're going to talk about it. So here we go. Let's get started. Look at some different examples. Um, here it says remainders in division have different meanings depending on the type of problem you solve. The same numeric solution shown on the right works for the following five problems. Discuss why the remainder means something different in each problem. So part A, the remainder is not part of the question. Thomas has one nine foot pine board. He needs to make four foot shelves or make four foot shelves for his books. How many shelves can he cut? Well, he can cut two shelves and he'll have one foot left over, right? So that is gonna go in the scrap wood pile and he, you know, it's not really part of the question. So uh two shelves the remainder does not get included okay he's just gonna put that to the side for another project all right number or letter b the remainder causes the answer to be rounded up, like that's what I was saying. Um, nine students are going on a field trip. Parents have offered to drive. If each parent can drive four students, how many parents need to drive? Well, if you imagine only two parents drove, that would mean eight kids get to go on the field trip and one kid gets to sit in the parking lot and wait for everyone to come back. So that's not nice. So uh, three parents, the one remainder means we need one more driver and nowadays i mean you probably most parents can't drive four kids because you can't have kids sit in the front seat Anyways, the remainder is a fractional part of the answer. So here's another example. One Monday, Kim brought nine apples to school. She shared them equally among herself 
and three friends. So that's a total of four people. Sometimes in word problems, it'll just say share them among her three friends, not including herself. I've seen a couple of these, um, so just be aware. Herself and three friends means four kids. How many apples should each person get? So this means that every kid will get two and... So, like, if you imagine an apple... And, like, a view from above, see, them. So she's going to have to cut this one in half and in half. And then every kid is getting two apples and one quarter. So two, she's dividing that one also into the four. So two and one-fourths. The remainder goes on top of the divisor in a fraction. Now we're going to talk a lot more about fractions later, so don't stress out if you're like, fractions? What are you talking about? But um, when we do fractions, we'll give you the fancy language for it. But if you're interested, it's numerator on the top and denominator on the bottom. And you might remember that from third grade. I think we did a little in third grade. The remainder is a decimal part of the answer. So this is similar using money. So Raul bought four toy cars for $9. Each car costs the same amount. How much did each car cost? So that would be two and one fourth dollars but usually we don't talk about dollars in one fourth what is a quarter of a dollar what is it you know it's a quarter right so 25 cents so that would be a dollar sign a two a decimal and then 25 for 25 hundredths of a dollar or a quarter of a dollar a quarter right um, so that is turning into a decimal part. And then, last but not least, the remainder is the only part needed to answer the question. Nine students have signed up to run a relay. If each relay can have four runners, how many students cannot run in the race? Well, in this case, there's eight kids running, and there's one kid left out, so one student. Poor kid. Hopefully someone can, you know, join with them. But uh, maybe they're solving that to figure out how many more kids to recruit. Right? So now we're going to practice doing problems like this and trying to identify how to use that remainder as we answer the questions. So let's go ahead and solve um, and we'll talk about it. Number one, Maddie tried to divide 160 stickers equally among herself and five friends. There's herself and five friends. So that's how many people? Six, right? So I have my math board here. Hopefully you do too. So we're going to solve it over here. 160 divided by six. Six goes into one. Not really. Six goes into 16 two times. Two times six is 12. Subtract. Bring it on down four and bring it on back 40. Okay. Six times six is 36. And then we have four. And then we have uh, so 26 remainder four. Right. So. The question is saying, how many stickers? So there are some stickers left over, so she kept them. How many stickers did Maddie get? So if she and everyone got 26, and then she kept the leftover ones, then she had, we'll write that down, do 160 divided by 6 equals 26 remainder 4. 
And then we're going to take that remainder and add it to what Maddie got. So then we'll have uh, 26 plus 4, which is 30 stickers. So in that case, we actually use that remainder to add to what she got. Interesting, right? All right, number two, Kendra bought a bag of 200 cheese crackers for her class. How generous. If each student gets seven crackers, how many students are there? How many crackers are left over? So let's go ahead. We're going to figure out the number of students and the number of leftover crackers. So 200. The group size is seven. Now we're going to figure out how many groups. Can seven go into two? Not really. Can seven go into 20? Sure. Uh, seven times two is 14. Subtract, six, bring that zero down. Seven times, hmm, seven times seven is 49. Seven times eight is 56. And then four. Okay, so that means we're gonna have 28 remainder four. So there are, Uh, no, this is tricky. So there are 28 students. And then the remainder is the four crackers that didn't get given to students. So we have uh, 200 divided by 7, 8, remainder 4. And then we have so 28 students. And 4 crackers left over. Remaining, right? That's the remainder. Okay, number three. Sherry bought shelves to hold 132 DVDs. Move my face over. Whoop! Ha <laughs> ha! Jerry bought a hunt, uh, shelves to hold is 132 DVDs. People used to own DVDs. I don't know if they still do now. I don't have any, I think. Uh, each shelf can fit eight DVDs. How many full shelves will Jerry have? So that's 132. And in this case, I'm not sure if we're even going to need the remainder because we're only talking about full shelves, right? So we'll have 132. Uh, eight DVDs per shelf, so eight goes into 13 once, and then that's eight, and then you get five, bring that two down, eight goes into 52 six times, and you get 48, right? 52 minus 48 is four, so remainder four. So we'll have 16 full shelves and then we'll have four dvds that just sit on the floor or something like that or maybe he'll give them to a friend i don't know but the remainder doesn't matter so that was 132 divided by 8 equals 16 remainder 4 so 16 full shelves if the question we're asking like, and does he need another shelf or something? Or like, how many shelves does he need to fill them at any level of capacity? Then we could say 17, because there's one shelf that's like half full, but we apparently don't care, right? So we're just gonna say, throw those DVDs away. Uh, now, number four. Rashid had 87 pennies. He divided them equally among his four sisters. How many pennies did Rashid have le left after he gave his sister their shares? So now, after he's divided it, he's looking at what is remaining, which means the only part we really care about is the what? The remainder. Okay, so 87 divided by 4. Uh, <clears throat> 4 goes into 8 twice, and you'll get 8, and you subtract the 0. 7 comes down, 4 goes into 7 once and you get four and you have three so 21 remainder three 21 goes to each sister three is what he has left over so we'll write the equation uh 87 
divided by 4 equals 21 remainder 3, 3 pennies left. That's the only part we needed. Um, and I use that sometimes too, because sometimes like earlier with the example I was talking about, about having two pencils left, then I can add that to like my extra pencil collection, you know, or something like that. And then after you've done that several times, you might even have a full class set of pencils after buying a little bit too much every time. Um, Mara wants to buy some new pencil boxes for her pencil collection. She has... 47 pencils. If each box holds nine pencils, how many pencil boxes does she need to buy? So she wants all of her pencils stored. She doesn't want to leave any on the ground like Jerry with his DVDs. She wants them all in boxes, which means if there are some boxes that may not be completely full, she's okay with that. She just wants all pencils in boxes. So let's go ahead. We'll take our 47 and we're going to divide it by nine. Okay, so 9 goes into 47 five times, and you get 45, and you have this remainder of 2. Now, this means if she had five boxes, there's two pencils on the floor. Does she want pencils on the floor? No. She wants all pencils in boxes. So she'll need to buy not just five, but one more that has a little bit of room for new pencils, right? So then she'll say, we'll write... Um, 47 divided by 9 equals 5 remainder 2. She needs to buy 6 pencil boxes. Mm -hmm. That way they're all in containers. Okay, last one here. You want to give it a shot? I mean, it's a little tricky, but I think you'll be okay. Henry's Coin Bank holds on. Who holds only nickels. That's funny. Henry takes four dollars and forty two cents to the bank to exchange for nickels only. How many nickels will he get from the bank? So I'm gonna convert this from dollars to just pure cents. So instead of four dollars and forty two cents. I'm going to say it's 442 cents because you're allowed to do that with math and money, okay? Because 400 cents is $4, right? So 5 goes into 44 eight times, and you get 40. And then you have 42 left over. 5 goes into uh, 42 eight times again. 40 and then you have two remaining so remainder two this means that to get all of his money back he will get 88 nickels and have two cents left over so how many nickels will he get he will get 88 nickels the remainder doesn't matter i mean maybe he'll give those pennies to one of those take a penny so 442 cents Divided by 5 equals 88 remainder 2, 88 nickels. Had a little bit of secret knowledge. You got to know that a nickel is 5 cents. Um, remainder doesn't matter. Okay, my friends. Uh, thank you for joining me. I will catch you next time um, when we do lesson number 10, mixed one-step problems. All right, bye-bye. See ya.